I guarantee you, there'll come a time where you'll question, is this what I was supposed to be doing? And that's the point in which I show up. And I believe most people do not know why they are here. But it's my job to help them in their career, at least, find out what their mission could look like, what their quest could look like. You have to be yourself. If you are not being you and you're wearing a mask and doing something else that you know is not aligned to your core beliefs, you will never, ever be happy. Hello, James. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, yeah, I am very well. Thank you for having a conversation with me today. Good to see you. Oh, for sure. Great to see you. I really appreciate your time. Uh, you know, we spoke before about all, all of the goals that you have in life, and that's amazing. Uh, so I really, and, and also they take a lot of time. So I really appreciate the time today. And I know that you, the value you're going to provide is so necessary, especially today. You know, so if we would have spoke, James, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, I'm sure still amazing value, uh, amazing conversation will connect. But I don't know if that if the value that we're going to talk about today would be that valuable back then, because, you know, the the way people used to look at the past was basically, OK, I finish college, whatever it is. And, and I just I work whatever I do. I work for 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, it doesn't have to be 40 years, but even 10 years, 15 years. And today, people change all the time their careers. All the, like every few years, people whether they change their career or the same career, but they move to a different job. And w when I, you know, when you go into your website, and of course later on, I would appreciate if we could drop if you could send me some links uh, that way people could connect to you. But you say there we grow, we grow your career. Now my yes. question is two. Number one, when you told when when you say that, like the first thing that comes to my mind grow the current career move to a different career so what well, if you could please share like what what, what do you see like what, what are people looking for and of course later on we'll also share the tools you'll share the tools uh that can also help people but i would love to hear more about that so i the first thing to tell anybody listening to this and if you're somebody who would love to maximize the results you get from your career i want you to simplify to amplify your career most people have overcomplicated their career and they may think, no, I haven't. I've got a job and I work the job and I get paid and I like it or I don't like it. Or I love the people. I don't love the job too much. And so there's a number of different dynamics for any individual who, who's going through their career. But when I use the frame career, you know, the frame career, or I use mission. I just tell, I think it's, I'll, I'll be able to transition you, transform you, be able to move you to a place where you really want to be. Because most people aren't working in the job they want. Most people aren't working the career they want. They're not doing the mission they want. And they're nowhere near the results they want. So when I use that phrase, we grow your career, I deliver you those results. So we take you from point A, wherever you are in point A, which is could be exciting for you right now. You could say, I love my job. I get paid handsomely. I love the people. I love the industry. But I'll say to you with a number of different questions, but where are you going? Where are you going with this? Where's your adventure? Where's your exploration? And one thing that's inside all of us is we, we demand growth of ourselves. We demand progress without no growth, without no progress, without no contribution and giving to others. We just can't be satisfied. All right. We think we can, but, but we're wrong. So you can be in a really good place right now where you love your job. You love the people, you love the money, you love the industry. I guarantee you there'll come a time where you'll question, is this what I was supposed to be doing? And that's the point in which I show up. <laughs> so that's the first thing. But the other the other side of that is there's a lot of people. It's just, uh, the stats don't lie, right? So it doesn't matter what stats you look at. The number is always more than 50% of people who don't enjoy their job. 50? Don't enjoy aspects. Always more than 50. But, but oh, no, look, it, it could be a lot higher. It's about 85% in some surveys. Wow. It's super high that how many people don't enjoy aspects of their role. And the reason being is because they're no longer feeling like they stand out, feeling like they matter, feeling like somebody cares about them. They're not being recognized. They're not being acknowledged. And I believe, as I think you do, everybody has a gift. Oh, sure. And I use this phrase, there's two days that are really important for you. And this might be a good way for me to end my first answer. So you can ask me another question. The first day that's the most important in your life is the day you were born. Because you're meant to be here. 
and I don't know how the stats work out on this, but you have like a one in 400 million chance of being alive. A one in 400 million chance of being alive. Crazy. Crazy. You don't know how lucky you are. And all you got to, and all these people complaining and judging and worrying about their lives. You know how lucky you are to be here? So that's the first day. Second day. Second day is the day you realize this is why I'm alive. Wow. And I believe most people do not know why they are here. But it's my job to help them in their career, at least, find out what their mission could look like, what their quest could look like. Because I, I don't think there's I don't think there's a work-life balance. In fact, I'm a big opponent of that. I don't think there's work-life balance. There's just life. But things you need in life, shelter, food, water, money. So you better get good at all of those things. You better get good at getting the money so you can have the shelter, food, and the water. Because you need those things to survive. But I don't want people just to survive. I want you to thrive and have a life. So why don't we get your mission and your quest and your career the best it could possibly be so what you can do what you really want to do. And we were talking before, and this is where I'll wrap it up, and then you can, you can ask me. Amazing. You and I have a passion for movement. We are passionate. You just told me about climbing up mountains. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my goodness, this, this guy climbs up mountains. Like, not small mountains. You went to the Himalayas, right? Yeah. The big mountains. You, you don't walk up those mountains you got to get climbing up those mountains and you're also an explorer you love travel we've got that in common that's life <laughs> all this work that's not life it's part of life and i have a big believer that you need to integrate that into your life and so if i can grow your career where it's integrated into your life i know you're going to get fantastic results and i believe in you and my my whole mission is to encourage people to be the best of them themselves. And that's 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 my mission statement. <laughs> so I hope that helps you. Did that give you the right answer? That that, that that's amazing. And th there's no right answer, you know, but th this is the right answer because this is the answer that you gave. And I think it's so beautiful. Well, first, I, I really would appreciate, you know, if whoever's listening to this, go back and there are a few like really pearls that you left there, but I'll, I'll just touch on, on one of them right now. And, uh, you know, many times we speak about work-life balance, okay? I think, James, that, when we are not in our place, when we, when, we, when, we, when we are not in our mission, like you said, you know, each person, I believe each person has gold in them. Each person has a treasure in them. And it's beautiful that, you know, you see it as your mission to help people uncover that, that, that goal. But when we are not in that place that we know what's our mission. So I think there is a place of work-life balance because, you know, we're, that, that's work. And then, and, and then we need to transit into our mission. And then, like you said, I, I, really, I really connect to that. There's no work-life balance because, you're living your life, you're living your mission. You know, we, we have a lot of, uh, of things in common. Also, by the way, the, also in values, also, you know, one of my goals is to hold people light their path, basically see the beauty that is in them so they could serve a purpose that is greater than themselves. So yeah, I, I, I think I, I think that we also connected in our places, but we'll also agree that, like you said, you, you have this as, as your one of your main missions that a person, in order not to play with that phrase, work-life balance needs to find their mission, right? Because otherwise we're just like like you said it's crazy those stats over fifty percent eighty like it's 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 crazy go to work and, and and don't like what they do and and people you know then you know get depressed and from there everything goes down the second you know someone shuts the light of, of his life so it also affects everyone around them their family their friends but my my question is you know many times you know you see all these people on the social media it's, yeah go change your career yeah yeah like shouting out loud. And my question is, James, should someone like from your experience go so fast and change their career or maybe inside their career, they could do a change. So is it necessarily changing what you do or maybe wherever you do change how you do it? Like what, what do you see from your experience working with so many people? Yeah, I, that's awesome. And, and so can I, I will answer with a story. I'll tell my personal story so I can give you some flavor for the kind of timelines associated with making shifts in your life that are going to be dramatic enough that are going to have a, a compounding effect because i think about just take money for example we want our money to compound and we know how to do that most of us you can save and invest i recommend you just invest and your money will compound over time and if you know anything about compounding you know at the end of the game if you've been putting money in continually you'll end up with a lot more than just the amount you put in that's the same for life so i want you to compound your life 
So I set myself on a mission in 2018 when I found myself in a position where in my career, I was miserable. Why was I miserable? Because a lot of people from the outside would have been looking at, you're living in a, a in a huge house. You have great vacations all over the world. You're making of an abundance of money. You're running a $95 million software company. You have 400 people that are dependent upon you for vision and strategy. There's another 100 people who want to talk to you every single day. You, you're, you've got a VIP status. I was miserable. Oh. Because I was operating out of alignment with my values. So I'll tell you what happened. So that's the quick base story. So, you know, where did I come from and why do I do this? I do this because I don't want people to experience that any longer than they need to. I want that to be temporary. In fact, everything is temporary, including life. For sure. So in 2018, I just made a decision. And this is when it happened. December the 25th, 2018, I sat down at the Christmas table. I had my silly outside of a cracker if you know what a cracker is it's where you pull two ends and in the middle there's a toy and a hat and a joke and maybe a, a fortune oh, teller think, in there yeah. and, and you put the hat on and you sit around the christmas table and you have the meal with the family and at the time i was drinking copious amounts of alcohol to numb the pain so i sat there with my glass of wine it was about this big <laughs> and i just held it up to my father-in-law who was sat opposite me and i said i've made a decision I'm going to leave corporate life this year. In the next 12 months, I'm leaving. He was probably shocked. He was shocked. His face dropped. And what was the first thing he said? You know? Nice joke. Other than that, he said, what are you going to do for money? So that told me about his mindset. That work is money. If your mindset's in that place about your work, question that. Why do you believe that? Who gave you that idea? Who gave you that belief system? Work doesn't have to be money. <laughs> it will, you should be paid for your activity. Don't get me wrong. So I then set myself on a mission. By March 2019, I'd hired coaches. I'd hired mentors. I was going to seminars and learning what are the things that I need to know to be able to make this transition successfully. And in March 2019, I was ready to quit my job on a Saturday on the following Monday to walk into the work and say, I quit and walk out in the fast way. Just quit and be free and do what you want to do and you'll make loads of money online and everything will be great. And I came home on Sunday evening and I walked in the door and told my wife this story and she looked at me and said, no, not happening. Because I need to know your plan. It's mm. not that I don't support you. I do, I love you, you're my husband. But I don't want to do this without a plan. That's why I said at the beginning, simplify to amplify. But I also want you to go through a process of personal planning, detailed personal planning that is specific, that we can measure, that has a date. And so I set myself the date. Okay. On July 4th, 2019, my sister got married in the UK. It was a wonderful day. It was a hot day. I was wearing a suit and the UK doesn't get very many hot days, but it was a hot day. So I'm sweltering in my suit, but I'm thinking I get to resign when I go back. <laughs> that cool. So we had down. a wonderful vacation. We did some time in the UK. We went to Portugal. We stayed in my dad's villa. He has a wonderful place there. It was great. And then we flew home. In my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to resign on Monday. But I was a different person. Remember, I've been doing personal development, professional development, working on me and making a detailed plan. I already had everything I needed to walk away. But I didn't for one thing. We were launching an AI algorithm in 2019. Can you believe that? You think about all the hype that's going on around AI now. We launched our algorithm in 2019. That saved $1 billion for an industry. Wow. It saved, it, it made three or 400 million on the first day. Crazy. But as it gets better and better over time with machine learning and all the things that we built in there, it make a billion dollars. Save that industry a billion dollars and uh, make some money too for the company, the software company. Wow. So I didn't quit. It was another month before I walked into my boss's office and said, I'm leaving. And I didn't say another word. I didn't resign. I just said, I'm leaving. What that was, was my his response? Decision. Well, he was red faced. <laughs> but then he looked at me and went, okay, let's create a plan. Let's transition. What are we going to do? What are you? And then he was asking me, what are you going to do? And I said, I have no idea. I'm going to retire. I just don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm miserable. I want to be happy. 
and what makes me happy. So let's focus on those things because it wasn't what I was doing. So the transition plan was, as I prepared with my grand, my, my father-in-law, I'm going to leave within a year. So he said, what does it mean? And I said, I'm not resigning. I'm just telling you, I won't be here next year. And I need you to know that through the planning process for the budget. I can't contribute to a budget that I'm not going to be delivering against. So I'll be out and I need you to transition. So we found another guy and he started on October the 1st and there was a transition period. And uh, I was eventually just kind of ushered out the back door one day and I was gone and I retired. Wow. Now people will be thinking, what did you do for money? I said, I made a plan. I thought, what am I going to do now? I have no idea. I didn't work for the next six months. I went inside myself and you said some beautiful things earlier about what do I, what do I think is most important that people hear in my answer to this question? You have to be yourself. If you are not being you and you're wearing a mask and doing something else that you know is not aligned to your core beliefs, you will never, ever be happy. I want you to stop, but I want you to make a plan and I want you to get help from somebody who knows what to do. It doesn't have to be me. It could be yeah. You could do this with yeah. In fact, I recommend you do speak to yeah. He's giving you this value today. You should speak to him. And if you don't want to speak to him, speak to me. If you don't want to speak to me, find someone. You need a physical coach. You need a mental health coach. And you need a business or career coach to change your life. So that's the first thing. Be you. Second thing, be somebody who connects more. The reason you may not be happy is because you're not connected. You're disconnected. You're isolated. So I don't want you to quit your job while you're isolating yourself because that's what people do. They quit and they go, I'm going to work online. And then they go and look in front of their laptop and do this. And then they scroll their phone all day and they think they're going to make money. But they've isolated themselves. They've disconnected themselves from the thing that was paying them, which was relationships and teams and people. You've got to connect. Number two. Last thing I'm going to say to you on this, and then we're back to the conversation. You have to create something of magnitude. I'm sorry. I just believe that if, if you want abundance, if you want to be incredibly fulfilled in your life create something of magnitude and it doesn't matter where you do that you don't have to be an entrepreneur in fact most of my clients don't want to be entrepreneurs they want me to coach them to go from director level to vp level to c-suite executive that's what most of my clients want to do now i have other clients who want to transition from employee to entrepreneur and i have other clients who are just entrepreneurs and they want more clients so I help them get more clients. But they're all those people have one thing in common. They want to create something of magnitude. And it's not about work. It's a mission. And in some, some people's cases, it's so they can go and spend time in the hospice where their son died. Can you imagine having a heart mission like that? Wow. They want to create the freedom from themselves, from their day job, so they can go to the hospice to help people whose children are dying. Yeah. That's a powerful mission. My grandma so was there. Hi, I hope this video is serving you. I just want to share with you that my belief in life is that you are here to serve a purpose greater than yourself. But in order to do that the best way, you must start with investing in yourself. Enjoy the rest of the video. Some of you have got these missions in your head, but you don't act because you're thinking about it from money. Well, I, I, I want to be an artist, but it doesn't pay very well. I want to be an actor. It doesn't pay very well unless you get a big job and it's very competitive, all those things. So these limiting beliefs that we pick up between age eight and age 18 stop us doing the activity because we believe it's too competitive or we're not going to get paid. But the problem is you're not thinking about your career in a simpli uh, simplified enough way. Simplify to amplify the results. So that's the, <laughs> that's wow. the, that, the that, that, answer to that one. It, <laughs> it, I'm just having it, so much fun. You, you're, dropping, you're dropping these questions and I can't, I can't hold back. I've got to let you have the it. The value, James, that you're providing here is amazing. Like, I, I think people should also, you know, uh, contact you in order, like you said, to, to build a plan and everything. But the, the like building over here, the base is that, that you gave here. And I'm sure this is only the beginning. It's amazing value. Now, if someone's just listening to this because they're not up to doing right now the work, so maybe just shut the YouTube and, and go back to it later on because really they're like golden nuggets over here. It's, it's more the nuggets that, that, that you provide. And again, I also am a big believer that you need someone to hold you accountable. So that's why uh, working with you could be amazing. But I, I want to cycle back for a second. You said something so important. Uh, a lot of the things that you said are important, but I want to cycle back to something that is so crucial for these days. You know, we live today in social media era. 
Now, from one hand, it could be a beautiful thing, right? Because you could connect with your family in England and I could connect with my family in America and wherever it is, yeah. Europe. But from the other hand, you could see someone, James, that today he's with a beautiful picture with his family and, and tomorrow commits suicide. And my point is that many times we compare ourselves to someone else when we really have no clue what's going on in their life. And we think that we need to look like that picture in social media that we saw of someone, even though, like I said, today he's happy tomorrow, he's depressed and I don't know what else he's doing. And like we're living in a world that is built over comparison. And you said, just be you. I think that's the base before planning, before connecting, before anything, understanding who we are. And 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 that that's by the way I don't think it's it's a one day uh, plan I th I think it's something through life but we understand our core values uh, I spoke about this with a few people from movement makers you know we get our core values at the beginning and then we could you know with time understand better what they are but what you said about understanding who we are I think that's the base for everything and after we understand that I think and it's you know for, from my perspective like I said I believe we're here to serve a purpose that is greater than ourselves. But in order to do the best way, we must first invest in ourselves. So we might, must take that step, those steps. And like you said, ha have those coaches and, and take those steps forward. My question is, now we're talking and, you know, it's really nice. Uh, you know, I uh, have a nice waterfall behind me. You have some beautiful plants and books and a nice guitar there. Uh, but if someone's listening to this now and he's like, he or she, whatever, they're saying, you know, n nice talk, but I really have no, like I have some type of idea or you know, let's go even, let's, let's take it further. I have no clue what I want to do. So like, what, 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 what's, what's the first step someone could do? Number one, if they have no clue, number two, if they do have a clue, but they're really afraid to start. Okay. Um, the reason why you may not have a clue is because you're so far detached from who you are on the inside. Wow. So you just, you just said it beautifully. The, the inner game takes time. And I started my journey 2018. In fact, it had started a long way before that, but the intentional actions started in 2018. Because before that, I had somebody who completed, uh, you may be familiar, Tony Robbins. I yeah. completed Mastery University. I, I, I think that Tony Robbins was the person who helped me have a stellar career because he helped me understand his six human needs and the way that works. And going through that experience was great. So I already had mentors, I already had coaches, but I wasn't, that still didn't get me to what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was, was some of my personal mission, to, to change the education system, to feed people who won't be fed today. There'll be 1 billion people on the planet who don't eat today. I don't like that. So in my heart, I got to do something about it. So how can I start feeding those people? But I want people to be connected to their mission. I, I really want that to happen. But I, but I think that the inner game is a long journey. And even now where I'm at, you said something beautiful uh, in this as well. Is that, you know, Michelangelo has this quote that he replied to a question. Now, there's more to this than the context that I'm going to give you. But somebody said to him, you know, why do you think you're such a successful creator and artist? And he was aged uh, 83 or 85 when he said this. 83 or 85 years old, two or three years before he died. I think he died at 87. And he said this, I never stop learning. So even somebody from the from our archive of history was talking about personal and professional development as what was most important. So I think you've got to go on that journey, the first thing. Um, you talked about comparisonitis and the, the, the worry of comparing ourselves to other people. That's what creates your fear. Your fear is that you've told yourself or somebody else told you you're not good enough. And if you feel like you're not good enough, you're concerned that you won't be loved. And that's too much of a burden for people to bear. We fear we'll be rejected. We fear we'll be financially ruined. We fear the responsibility of living the life we are here for. To do the thing that you are supposed to be doing, we fear the responsibility because it comes with responsibility. The work you do comes with responsibility. I'm sure you wake up like I do and ask this question, who will I serve today? But we don't wake up in the mornings and go, oh, another day. There's that famous phrase, right? Same shit, different day. 
People who think like that have got work to do. So I, I think it comes down to understanding your emotions and why they feel the way you are, what your programming did for you. I think um, feel the fear anyway. <laughs> By the way, I, I think you do need to be fearful. I think fear is a great, powerful tool. And I, I think you, you can fear your future. That's anxiety and worry about your future. It's kind of normal. Doubt is universal. We all doubt things. Even those people you see on TV, they're doubting, doubting things too. The megastars of the world, they are doubtful. They don't live their days without doubt. They just have systems and strategies and tools to deal with the doubts because they've done the work on themselves. They know who they are. So don't, don't fear that. And how do you do that? And start paying more attention to your emotions. What? And then ask. Don't, don't listen to your emotion and go, I'm going to go to the refrigerator and see how much ice cream I've got left and eat the ice cream. No, just ask, why am I feeling crappy? And it's likely to be one of three things anyway. One, it was the refrigerator. Your nutrition strategy is off. And you're consuming things that you shouldn't be. And you, you know, <laughs> we talked before we came on and I've shared a story about alcohol. I've consumed way too much alcohol in my life. Way too much. I've drunk myself into stupors to numb the pain of the disappointments of my life. But other people do recreational drugs. They do pharmaceutical drugs. They take more salt in their system than they can possibly have because they're spending their time driving through drive throughs And the sodium content that's going in their system is killing them, rotting them from the inside. But this is to numb the emotional pain. So what I will ask all of you to do is just to look at your emotions and ask, why? Why do I feel like this? Is it my nutrition? Is it my rumination, my overthinking? Have I spent too much time thinking about my problems instead of making a firm decision and taking action? Delayed decisions equal suffering. If you delay your decisions, you're going to suffer. I delayed my decision about leaving my corporate life. I suffered immensely. So that's number one, nutrition, rumination. Last one, emotional regulation. Are you being triggered by other people? Quick story. Somebody posted on LinkedIn a post. I did not like it. I got angry and I wanted to type and do my hater stuff. <laughs> I was out of control. I never did type anything. I went to my coach and asked him, why do I feel so angry about this? And he said, it's unresolved trauma. It's your identity, that you feel you've got to make it right, that you feel you're better than somebody else, that you've got an ego that's out of control, that you can't control your emotions. So I started to do the work on my emotional control, emotional regulation. And now all I do is encourage, 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 and love, 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 pour love into situations. So if she ever posted again, that lady, she's wonderful. Wow. All, I know what is I all, all opinions are valid. All opinions. You just don't have to let them control your emotions. <laughs> let your intelligence resist your compulsions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. You know that, you know, a second ago, you said, you said it, you read it and you're like, wow, like you're going crazy. And then now just pour, pour, you're pouring love in there. So I love that. And with all the things that you said, I think, you know, many times uh, when it comes to emotion, uh, I, you know, I have a background in military and all that. And, a lot of times, so our emotions is like something like you, you put under the carpet. And then I heard uh, a really beautiful uh, lady talking about uh, vulnerability. I forgot now her name. Uh, Brené Brown, maybe Brené Brown. Brown. Brené Brown. And I think it was her. She created the market, right? She created the vulnerability market with she, a wonderful story. Yeah, she's she's really amazing. Her TED what Talk is wow. Wow. And I think it was her saying that in order to heal, you need to feel. So you know, when I used to have any chat, like emotions come up. So, okay, like, hey, go put on your running shoes, go for a run, then be grateful, put your mind on, on the good stuff and go mm -hmm. help someone else. And I think well, all those stuff are good. But, I, you know, as I think like a month ago, I was, I was going through a tough time and I, I, I want to go through that thing. And I said, wait, one second, feel the pain. Now, after that, I'll decide if, if, if I want to attach it or not, but feel it, it's here. Okay, now it has a message, okay? A every feeling has a message. doesn't matter what type of message it is or what type of feeling, but there's a message that comes to serve us. So I really connect to what you said there. And I think most important is that the understanding, yeah, we do have the treasure in us and we do have the capability uh, to go and find it, but having someone holding us accountable is really important, James. 
And that's why I think what you did in helping uh, hundreds of people already uh, finding that passion, finding that career path, to be honest, it's not hundreds, it's it's thousands, it's much more than that, because you might have helped, I don't know, a thousand, whatever people, but that whole, the circle around them and their circle around them, and it, like it circles and circles, and you hope much more than what you think you actually hope. And I think that's so beautiful because the, the light you bring is not only to those people, it's to them, but then they bring that light to the people around them and around them, and then it just becomes much, much bigger. Uh, so I really appreciate you for that, and thank you very much. Uh, I'll also, I'll leave links down in the bottom that people ca could uh, uh, contact you because listening and, you know, we could do things that are on our own for sure. But uh, having someone uh, that we appreciate, again, it could be you, it could be someone else, but I really co connect to your values, but someone holding us accountable, someone that knows that, okay, first, you know, when I say holding accountable, I'll just go back a second. It needs to be someone we're appreciating, someone that appreciates us. We can't just be vulnerable with whoever we want because then it would crush us. You know, it, it doesn't work like that because uh, people who don't care about us and will be vulnerable with them, <laughs> it's not a good recipe. But go, like I said, going to someone like you, to a different coach or to a close friend uh, could be, could really, really, really be valuable, you know, for, for, for any human being's growth. So I really appreciate all of the great tools that you gave here today. Like I said, I'll also uh, leave a link below to uh, contact you. And yeah. thank you. Thank you for your, your beautiful value and your missions are, wow, you know, amazing. I, I, I really connect to them and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you'll get there. I thank you. I really enjoyed my time. Thank you for having me. Uh, I cannot wait for us to talk again. So I'm looking forward to that. For sure. Have a great day there. See you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got some tools to overcome your challenges and light your path. For us to help other people, please press that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that the most amazing things in life are the one you take for granted.